when you first heard it, you're like, come on, that's kind of conspiracy. Because, I mean, who, would, who, who names something Agenda <laughs> 21? I mean, when I, I flew into the Seattle airport one night, yeah. um, and the Department of Homeland Security actually paints their helicopters, I'm not kidding, black. And I'm like, come on, guys. Really, you've got actual black helicopters. Um, so it, I didn't believe it. And we started doing our research, and it's so overwhelmingly out in the open you, you can't believe that nobody else is looking. For everyone here tonight not familiar with Agenda 21, I would suggest that this is the beginning of your learning curve, not the end. Good evening, I'm Rosa Corey. I'm the Executive Director of the Post Sustainability Institute. And I'm glad to be here tonight. It's an important night because we're drawing something out of the shadows. And it's important to talk about it. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. This is Agenda 21. This is the United Nations plan. It's a 300 page, 40 chapter plan. And ICLEI was created in 1990 prior to this plan's adoption to implement. United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development Worldwide. Sustainable development is a term that was defined by um, the United Nations, and all of these terms come out of the United Nations. Smart growth is part of the United Nations Agenda 21. Your general plan elements are designed in accordance with United Nations Agenda 21 principles. The plan restricts your choices, it limits your ability to govern yourself, and it takes away your freedom. This seems like a rhetorical statement, but it really is not. This is actually what this plan does. And uh, using the cover of environmental concern, our private property rights and our civil rights have been diminished, and they will continue to be so unless we call a halt to it. <laughs> ICLEI is the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, but it changed its name so that you wouldn't know that it's international. It seems like all of these things seem like they sound so good. Sustainable development, green, vibrant, walkable, bikeable. You know, how could you be against that? But really, the, when you know about this plan, it is really very serious. Did you know that there's regional plans all across the nation right now that are being rolled out that are all exactly the same? They're all in alignment with the principles of UN Agenda 21. And ICLEI is their agent. An NGO is an affiliate of the United Nations. That's what that means. They're not, a, they're not um, part of this government. They're outside, coming from outside of our nation. And they don't have the best interests of Americans at heart. What they're going for is 11 regions in North America, not states, not our 50 states, 11 regions, they will be appointing people to do the planning and the running and the operation of those regions through the United Nations. The International Council of Local Environments is an oxymoron to me. What does the International Council have to do with our local environments? On the ICLEI website, it says, 200 local governments from 43 countries convened at our inaugural conference, the World Congress of Local Governments for Sustainable Future at the United Nations in New York. I think there's a connection. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Mora? I am patently against ICLEI and Agenda 21, and I urge the city as a resident to withdraw your membership. That's not to say give up your green programs. That's not to say give up striving to have a better environment. But disconnect from this organization, it is not good. This isn't about green. Green is just the guise. Green is just the guise until we open our eyes and realize that control is how the people that you're working for really roll. Here is the local agenda planning guide. Ickley. Local Agenda Planning Guide, ICLEI. If you open this up, it it's from Maurice Strong. It talks about the United Nations. It talks about Agenda 21. This is it. You cannot deny that they are not connected. 
Neither the United States Congress nor the American people have voted for Agenda 21's implementation. They are there to indoctrinate people on the local level and bring it up through the state until it's a reality. And these people are all here tonight because they, they sense the same jeopardy. I hope that you understand this is bigger than all your tree questions and your trash disposal or anything else. Thank Former President of the United States, George Bush Sr. said, effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of human society, unlike anything the world has ever experienced. A major shift in the priorities of both governments and individuals and an unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. Dixie Ray, former Washington State Governor and Assistant Secretary for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs stated, Agenda 21 seeks to establish a mechanism for transferring the wealth from citizens to the third world. Fear of environmental crisis would be used to create a world government and UN central direction. This segment of our society who fear one world government and UN invasion through which our individual freedoms will be stripped away would actively work to defeat any elected official who joined the conspiracy by undertaking Agenda 21. So we will call our process something else. We will call it comprehensive planning or growth management or smart growth. We ended up with sustainable development. Sustainable development has become the popularized expression for Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems. It also elevates nature above man. And it contains something called the precautionary principle, where basically you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. It's based entirely on socialist control mechanisms. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. The focus of sustainable development is the abolition of private property, societal undermining of the family, and abandonment of the constitutional protection of unalienable rights as described in the Declaration of Independence. You see, I sat on the Santa Cruz Agenda 21 committees. Now, this was a lot of crazy ideas. This is back in the mid-90s. Crazy ideas, I heard. Mother Earth's surface wasn't to be scratched. Human beings were to be concentrated into human settlement zones. Educational systems were to focus on the environment as the central organizing principle. All aspects of life were, were covered. Well, I went to these committees at the request of some people who told me that I needed to understand what was going on, and I came back and I said, this is craziness. This is so silly. It has no chance of having any effect on our society. Well, I was wrong. The United States government's support for sustainable development, Agenda 21, is very clear. In 1992, while the Rio conference was going on, George Bush, then president, was there where he executed the Agenda 21 protocols on behalf of the United States and brought it back to Washington, D.C. Within a year, Bill Clinton, by executive order, no congressional review, established the President's Council for Sustainable Development. In Santa Cruz, We've got a two-lane freeway system. We need four, but what we're getting is hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money 
to take a dilapidated rail line that Southern Pacific wants to put in the hands of somebody else so that a commuter line can be built along the railroad track. That will be followed by 14-story buildings where people will live and stack them and pack them units, where developers or so-called sustainable developers will build these high-rises with federal dollars. It's a partnership between selected developers building this new world order and the government using the American taxpayer dollars in order to do it. This is a map of the Wildlands Project. To explain the map, the red are areas that are to be off limits to human beings. No resource development, no human activity. If you live there, you won't. Coming up, if you don't live in a major metro area, you might want to pack your bags. Years ago, moving to the suburbs was a sign that you were making a better life for yourself and your family. But our next guest details a government report suggesting there may be a long-term plan to change all that for you. The effort to, quote, Manhattanize America. If you live in the suburbs, don't get too comfy. Our next guest says the Obama administration has plans to push Americans, slowly but surely, out of the burbs and into the big cities as a means to, quote, spread the wealth around. The yellow areas are the areas for major control of all human activity. If you live there, you won't. The black areas, the black dots, are the smart growth zones. That's where human beings are to be stacked and packed in small living units along rail tracks. Notice, the barbed wire faces in. Not out. All right. We're going to go ahead and get out here. Let's take a look at this a little closer. Stick with me. Okay. And these buildings are pretty massive. They could hold a whole lot. Basically, there's one, two, three, four, all the way down there. There's another one over there and one in front of that. So there's six big buildings. And then you notice each of the doors are numbered. W01, W02, W03. Well, out to be labeled E-211. And again, we'll get a closer look at the barbed wire here. Again, facing in. You can see the railroad tracks that go on the sides of all the buildings. And it's pretty much been covered by a lot of people. You see the sign out there, hopefully, that says Homeland Security for the T. Don Hutto Residential Center. And so there it is. It's been designated as a FEMA camp in time of uh, civil unrest or declared emergency. A stockpile of military vehicles were recently discovered occupying a secluded commercial property on the outskirts of Las Vegas, at the address of 5750 Sky Point Drive. It doesn't seem as if the Humvees and other military-grade vehicles are for sale, even though they are stationed at a former car dealership that has been stripped of its business logo and signs. It would appear as if the equipment is deliberately being hidden from the public on this secluded property surrounded by barbed wire fences. The front of the building, which can be seen while driving north on Interstate 95 while departing from Vegas, is littered with pedestrian vehicles. After closer investigation, it was clear that the former United Dodge dealership is some sort of military station. Judging from the soldiers on the property, all dressed and outfitted in army fatigues. However, there is no clear indication or signage posted certifying that it is a United States military base. One 18-year-old boy named Jonathan, who lives in the area, proclaimed the military has been there for six months now. His friends added, we think it's a secret undercover operation or military base. Charlotte Iserby, I owe you an apology. I did not believe for the longest time it was a deliberate dumbing down. I thought the dumbing down was a natural consequence of a bad idea. Folks, it's deliberate. It's deliberate. The sustainable globalist goal is the orchestration of a planned fall of American principles, values, and lifestyles. 
The effect on the average American will be devastating. With modernizing technology, the ordinary person will live without independence, privacy, or substantive rights. This government has been working overtime to take away our rights to common law through many pieces of legislation. Common law is what guarantees us an ability to correct injustices. This coming year, I promise you, you will also hear debate over a number of pieces of legislation that will further erode our common law rights. And you have to get behind me on this, ladies and gentlemen, to stop this from going through. As Agenda 21 became more and more apparent to me, I began using the line in Parliament the government was now declaring war on its own citizens. And that goes back as far as 2008. This, of course, led me to being labelled a conspiracy theorist. But here we are now, openly talking about Agenda 21 and the ramifications we will see in a short period of time if this is not stopped in its tracks. The environmental crisis will be the international disaster that will unlock the new world order, one world government.